，生命像一条尼龙绳索，圈绕着脖子。松松的时候，我尖叫：“活着真好！”竖起的时候，我害怕杀死自己的欲望。反复之间，我们如狗吐着舌头。这一天，要去摩天轮。还是卧轨呢。I was teaching in Bath,、um, and I asked each of the students to write a sentence about the pet that they knew.、Um, and Amy sat back, and everyone else was writing, and Amy sat back and refused to write. And I said, "Why aren't you writing?" And she said, "I'm not going to write." And I said, "You will write."、Um, and so she wrote something, and.、Um, Then a minute later, I asked everybody to read their sentence, and when we got to Amy, she read, "Lee, I was your soil, but I betrayed." And then she stood up and she ran out the room. And at the break, I said to my principal, "I said, what happened?"、Um, a woman just burst into tears in my class and ran away. And she said, "He said, 'Ah, you've met Amy.、Uh, you've met the poet.'" I said, "Great." And later on,、uh, when she published her her book of poems, her first book,、uh, to sing, to dance, to be a wolf, I was very interested in in、um, reading these poems,、uh, and obviously I couldn't. There was no English, and so one by one, she would translate a poem, and I would write in the English alongside the Chinese, and then finally, when it was finished, and I filled up the whole book with English. I chose my twenty favourite poems, and I started working and shaping them into English poems. And this is what made me want to tackle some of the more complicated but interesting poems in that book, which I couldn't do on my own. And that's how Amy introduced me to Ingrid Fan, the interpreter and translator. Well, it's a little bit crazy because Ingrid is in Brazil at the moment. She lives in Brazil.、Uh, she Has studied over here.、Uh, she was born in、uh, Taiwan, I believe.、Uh, and Amy's in Taiwan.、Um, it can be very, very frustrating because you're all talking at、uh, cross purposes, and it would be a lot easier to just get everyone in a room and go look and just hammer it out, as it were. And you can't do that.、Uh, whenever you think something's finished, then someone else will say, "But, but," and so it goes. You know, it's been a long process. As the project developed. She wanted the poems to be separate from her first book, so that meant her writing new poems, which she brought in. Then the new poems needed new paintings beside them, and so it just grew and grew and grew into its own thing. You just realise what's involved in producing a pamphlet yourself, because you have to write the biography of all of the three、uh, contributors. Then there was a foreword that was added by a poet from Taiwan. Then there was a poem that was added by that poet. Then Amy wrote a beautiful last poem for the book that had to go in. And so, in a way, these are refinements. You are just refining them.、Um, I think the pamphlet is much better than it was in January.、Um, and I'm just, I, I will be delighted when it is published and I can actually hold it and see the fruits of our labour. I think we're all very excited to be working with each other. I walk on Old Bone Street, pick up a black pencil. There's a rabbit toy in the trash can. It smells like milk. I stuff it into my handbag like a rubber. I like broken, stained, abandoned things. A bird sings, "I love you." No one can stop it. The next minute, it weeps. I know your bone, black and fresh. I have touched your heart. Let's interrupt each other's lives, like birds burst into each other and split up at the next corner, each looking for the perfect partner with whom to buy a fridge. 
our sad smiles revealing we are no longer writing poems. Split up like lightning with just the pictures to show. This painting is typical of Amos work, I think, as a painter and as a poet. Because, well, we have candles and we have a butterfly, but at the same time we seem to be under the water because we've got these bubbles and this apparent fish and the hull of a ship. And so I think a lot of Amos poetry is having its cake and eating it. Um, and that's why she's so resistant to explaining and clarifying the situation of her poems. She often seems to be talking about two different states simultaneously that exist. She might even be talking about two different times uh, in her life at the same time, but just viewing them simultaneously. Simon Armitage said when he was translating Sir Gawain and the Green Knight from the Middle English that unlike Old English it was just as if the meaning was just below the surface and all it needed was a breath. I didn't want to elaborate or, or put my own character in the way. I wanted to just be transparent and have it as a kind of reflection as much as I could. And I think, I think my job was just to tidy and tighten. Amy has said that she really enjoys reading my translations because I often find patterns, because I'm, I'm an English writer, and so I want things to be more controlled. So, so she, will, she will enjoy the quatrains or the tercets that I put her work into, which is very different. But it's just another way of structuring, I think. This has grown, this project, gradually. If I hadn't stayed in touch with Amy, um, if I hadn't been interested in maybe improving her language and just presenting her English poems more clearly, um, I wouldn't have got to know her poetry so well, and then I wouldn't have been interested in translating the book so I could read it. Um, perhaps the same with Ingrid as well. Ingrid read, read the work and she, she wondered if she could render it in English. The only way I've been able to read the first section of her novel is through Ingrid's translation, so she's made that accessible to me. So I think um, just do it is the message of this collaboration. Some of my favourite poets aren't English, um, and so I read them in translation. And there's a beautiful symmetry to a good translation, and sometimes you just go, ah, there it is, and it's so simple, it's been staring you in the face. So the downside is that the translation is never really complete because you might think you could always go back to it and improve upon it. But the plus side is it's play. Well, I'm a translator with no knowledge of uh, Chinese, the language that I'm working with. However, I do find that Taiwanese poetry is perfect for me because I've learned a lot about it. It's it's very imagistic, uh, and that's something that's very translatable. You also get a sense of story, I think. These, these characters, the man from 42B, who was that man who looked after your cat, who, who bought you plum juice, who coloured uh, when he spoke to you, who threw himself from a window, who was that man? These are stories that really anybody could understand. They're simple, but they have depth as well. And Amy is a completely different writer to me. Um, she writes in, in imagery, um, she's a lot bolder than me, there's a lot of sentences she, she will state things I would never risk stating. Um, her, her history of being steeped in Taiwanese poetry is something that has a great sense of pattern. Um, which is something that I've tried to put into the work, into my translations. Wei完成的画布,石头,桥,流水。这一笔越来越逼真。有人呼唤你,你一回头,才惊觉。这哭,这哭。这一生越来越抽象。